All right, guys, so I just wanted to do a short video on uh, compound interest and, and how to calculate compound interest. Um, it's probably one of the most powerful financial tools, uh, you know, ever in the history of everything. Um, it's, it's really amazing. And um, let's kind of dig into a little bit of like what it is and then how to calculate compound interest. Um, so compound interest is essentially like interest building on top of interest and principal. Um, and so I've used an example here of like a hundred dollars. So let's say we invest a hundred dollars and this year we earn 10% on that hundred dollars. So at the end of the year, we're going to have $110. That's going to give us a gain of 10 bucks, right? That's good. When we start the next year, now we're going to have $110 invested. And let's say we earn 10% again, right? Now we're going to have $121. That's going to give us a gain of $11, right? So the first year we gain 10, the next year we gain 11. If we add that to our principal, the beginning of the third year, we have $121. If we add 10% again, we're going to have $133. That's going to give us a gain of $12.10. So you can see that the more and more and more and more we calculate this, imagine we had like many, 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 many years here, you would be gaining more in interest every single year and your, your total would be going up, right? So what is happening is when we have, let's say this $110 here, the $10 that we earned the year before is helping to contribute to more interest in that second year and also in the third year and also in the fourth year and, and so on and so on and so on. So that's why many investors will say that the longer you can leave your investment invested, the better because you're basically earning more and more and more interest every single year. Now, okay, that's assuming that our 10% stays the same. Who knows? It could go to like negative percents and that sucks, right? We don't want that. But that's the premise of compound interest, right? Now, if we think about these things as not years, like if we think of these lines as not years, but in terms of like just calculations, like the number of times we've done this calculation, we call those compounds. And compounds can happen every year, but it could also happen every month. It could happen every week. It could happen every day. It could happen every hour. So as we can see here, the more compounds we have, the more chances our interest will grow uh, at a faster rate. So credit cards, they have daily compounds, right? Now that's compound interest we don't like because we've got to pay that. But if we're earning interest, we like lots of compounds. If we're paying interest, we want very few compounds, okay? So the formula for compound interest is a very simple formula, but it kind of looks weird. Um, it's this formula, FV equals PV brackets 1 plus i to the exponent of n. So let's go through and kind of pick around what those things are. FV stands for our future value. So what is the value of our investment in the future? We, we don't know when the future is, you know, exactly. Uh, it could be tomorrow or it could be in 10, 20 years, who knows. Present value is the value right now, PV. I we always think, everyone thinks I is interest. It's like, yeah, kinda. I stands for our periodic interest rate. So that's the yearly interest rate divided by the number of calculations we're gonna do in a year. So let's say we're doing um, calculations every month, right? That means we have monthly compounding. Okay, so if our yearly interest rate is 12% and we have compounds every month, we're gonna take 12% divided by 12 compounds in a year and that's gonna give us an I of 1%. Okay, so, so um, the yearly interest divided by the number of compounds per year. And then our N is the total number of compounds in the entire time of this investment. So if we have two compounds a year 
and our investment's gonna last five years, we're gonna have an N of 10. So let's kind of try an example and just see how that feels. Um, what is the future value of $10,000 invested for 20 years at 7% compounded monthly? So we want this formula to do a interest calculation every month. And we're going to leave this $10,000 invested for 20 years. And okay, we're going to assume that we're going to get 7% for the entire duration of this investment. And sometimes it's hard to know but that's just what we're going to assume, okay? So I'm gonna put in what we know, right? We don't know the future value, but we know all of this stuff, more or less, okay? So our present value right now is $10,000. One plus I, so let's do, I'm gonna come over here and do a little calculation for I. I is equal to 7% expressed as a decimal. So I'm gonna say 0 0.07. And I'm gonna divide by the number of compounds in the year. We're gonna have compounded monthly. So we're gonna have 12 compounds in a year. So if I get my uh, trusty 1970s calculator here, um, I'm gonna go 0 0.07 divided by 12. And I'm gonna get a decimal number and Every single digit here matters, okay? So do not round these numbers. If you round the numbers, you're gonna get a completely different answer. So you want every single digit here. So I know it's a pain in the neck, but we gotta write them down. Uh, where can I put this so you can see it? So my I is 0 0.005833. Okay, so I'm just kind of keeping that separate from the rest of the equation. So in our equation, I is 0 0.0058333. Exponent N. Okay, so N, we have 12 compounds per year, right? Compounded monthly. And we're going to do that for 20 years. So I'm going to have 12 times 20, our n, let's do that, 12 times 20, 240 compounds. So up here, this little exponent is going to be 240. And that probably feels weird because a lot of the times we're not used to putting in big exponents like that. Um, but it is a thing in financial math. You, you can get really large exponents. You can also get negative exponents. Um, so just kind of be prepared for that. It, there's no real, you know, it doesn't screw anything up. Your calculator can totally do it. Um, even this 1970s calculator can do it. Um, but it's just something for us to get used to. It just looks weird. Okay, so now we're going to go and solve this. Um, remember your order of operations. We're going to do brackets first. So 10,000, inside the bracket is 1.0058333, 240. Remember bed mass, right? Order of operations, bed mass does exponents before multiplication. So I'm going to do this exponent first and then multiply by 10,000. 1.0058. Exponent is this, um, on this calculator, I don't know if you can see it, this little YX button, is your exponent button. So I'm gonna press exponent, two, four, zero, and hit equals. And this, I'm getting uh, 4.038 and some other stuff. All right, so this, this whole chunk of stuff here is equal to 4.038, and now I'm gonna multiply by 10,000 and we get 40,387. Okay, so I'm gonna write that down. Our future value is gonna be 40,387 and seven cents. I'm just rounding those last 
See, it's the last couple of decimal places is 0, 06, 7. I'm just rounding that because I want the nearest cent. So 0, 07 is what I'm writing down here, 7 cents. So that's really good. So if we kind of sit back and reflect for a second, holy geez, that's not a bad deal, right? We invest $10,000 which I know is a lot of money, but it's also an attainable, like, you know, if you can, you know, hustle at work or something, you might be able to save up 10,000 bucks. And if you invest it for 20 years, which might seem like a long time, it's really not, that time will pass. And if you can invest it at 7%, which is attainable, by the end of this duration, you would have $40,000, right? That would be great. And if we could do that a couple of times, you know, if we could invest maybe a little bit more and leave it invested a little bit longer and get a little bit of a higher interest rate. Wow, this can really turn into some serious financial planning. So that's how future value is calculated. It's a very easy formula. It makes a great tattoo. And it's relatively easy to calculate, you know, once you get comfortable with it. There's N, I, and F, V. Wishing you a great time playing around with some math. Have a good day, everybody.